Hi there, welcome to Real Life on the Homestead in Ontario. And I thought I'd just share this with you because any opportunity I can to make a video and share with you, I do. My son is planning to go with his friends for some interior winter camping and they are taking off Friday night and unfortunately they're looking at a real storm coming in as well as it's going to be minus 18. That's Celsius by the way. Um, so they're in for a fun run. They use a hot tent that has a wood stove so they're pretty equipped and they know what they're doing but I'm just going to help them out a little by getting them set up for their first night's meals because once they get the tent and the wood stove set up they're going to be really tired and making a meal at that point is going to be difficult so i am making some jambalaya for them to just fry up in the pan and heat up as quickly as possible now when you're interior camping especially in winter you got to have the lightest load possible because you're trekking through snow and you're backpacking. So uh, I am going to place the jambalaya inside a zipper bag and that can go in a backpack, no problem. And that way they can just take it out of there, put it in their light fry pan and heat it up on the wood stove. So that's just something I'm gonna share with you. The other thing is um, eggs. I've put a dozen eggs in a water bottle Put a funnel on here. Uh, let me just show you. I'm going to just take one out. Put a funnel on here, a little bit bigger than this one. And I cracked the eggs and they went through the funnel into the bottle. And then I gave it a good shake so it doesn't look gross or anything. That's going in the fridge now. But this will be great because they could just pour out of here um, and bring the bottle home. Because everything that goes into the interior comes back out. And if you're going to camp the interior, you better bring your garbage out. So I'm going to get started with the jambalaya and share with you how to make it. Well, we're just going to start off with a heavy bottom pot. I've placed some olive oil in there and chopped some onions. And we're going to get those sauteing until they get a little bit brown. To that, we're going to end up adding some of our bell peppers that we grew in our garden last year. I freeze them and then I can use them for dishes this way as I need because we know how expensive peppers get in the winter months. I also have some green onions from our garden, but I'm going to add those in later. Now what the idea is, is to saute this until they get nice and caramelized. Now here is some long grain rice. I do not wash it and I add all my spices to it. Here I have salt, pepper, paprika, cumin, chili powder, cayenne powder, oregano, thyme, bay leaves. Um, and I keep that together because what I'll do is I will fry up the rice before adding water. I then take a choris, which is very similar to an andouille sausage, except it is a Portuguese version. And we make these ourselves and smoke them. Um, I've taken this out of the freezer and I'm just going to cube it up and fry it um, in our onion and pepper mixture. I like to cube it fine so that it has nice flavor crisp bits and that way also the oils will come out of the sausage and that smoky flavor will get into the rice. This makes for a beautiful jambalaya without a lot of effort. Now we're just adding that sausage to the pot and like I said, I'm going to saute this and let the sausage get crispy. Not hard, but a nice little crust on it and you will see the oils coming out of the sausage. Meanwhile, I'm going to take one of our chicken breasts. This is from our own free range chickens that we raise. I do package up breasts separate because we're not huge white meat fans and this is a perfect use of the white meat. I take the skin off and then I debone it and cube it up. Same size pretty much as the sausage, works really well. Now, not to worry, when I cut this chicken up, I'm going to debone it and use that bone 
for some stock later. So it's going to go into my stock bag in the freezer. After I chop my chicken, I am going to disinfect my board with some of my apple cider vinegar. That's how I clean my boards after cutting chicken or turkey on it, or actually any type of meat. I like to clean my boards using the apple cider vinegar that we make. This bone is going into my stock bag. Now cubing this um, chicken doesn't take very long, but I must say I do prefer to do it when it's slightly a little bit on the frozen side. Just find it's easier to cube. Um, but I had an interruption and the chicken was thawing. And here we go. I am doing um, pretty soft chicken. But anyway, I'm getting through it pretty good. Just got to make sure that the pieces are even so they easy bites. And I, like I said, I like them to match the sausage as much as possible in size. And these will be going into the pot with the sausage. Now, let me clean my hands and we will continue. Now, can you see in the pot how the oils are um, a golden color? We're just gonna add the chicken to that and we're going to start to brown it, but I don't have to worry about cooking it through because it will cook as the rice cooks as well. If I find it's just a tiny bit dry as it appears to be here, I'm gonna add a little bit more olive oil. Now a slight drizzle of olive oil is all you need and I don't use extra virgin for this, I just use a light olive oil. That looks much better. We can see the oils coming out of the sausage and the meats. And I just move everything aside because when I add the rice and the spices, I want them to toast a little bit. And I want there to be some oil to toast those spices. Now the rice will very quickly absorb the juices and the oils but I'm going to do a slight toasting and make sure those spices, oh my goodness, the smell is getting so amazing in here. I want everything to get coated, the rice to be completely coated in oil. And as it starts to cook down, this is when I start to add water. Now that it's starting to smell very fragrant in here, all the juices are soaked up, I'm slowly going to add some water. I want to get it cooking, but I don't want um, to add all the water all at once. I wanna bring up the temperature slowly. As you can see, it's pulling right off the bottom. You're deglazing the bottom just beautifully. This is perfect. This is where I decide to add a little bit more flavor. My fermented pepper paste. I make this in the fall. I didn't do it this year because we had plenty. I make two versions, a hot and a super hot. This will be slightly hot because the boys will be out in the woods and they won't have toilets uh, handy in case they need them. So I wanna make sure that they're safe. And to this, I will add the rest of the water. Now, all we're going to do is bring this up to a boil. I'm gonna cover it, help it move along. We're gonna let this sit, bring it up to a boil. Once it's boiling like this, I'll give it a stir again. Add my green onions. These are from our garden again. They were in the freezer. And I'm going to cover and put this on a simmer for 20 minutes. The idea is to cook the rice, but we're not going to stir it again. I do not want it turned to mush. Our 20 minutes have passed, and look at this. Perfect. 
it's all evaporated i'm going to shut the stove off keep the cover on just for a slight bit of time as you can see there's still a little tiny bit of moisture which is fine it will all soak up as it sits and then we're going to let this cool down so that i can get it packaged the best way to cool it down is to take it out of the pot and place it on a cookie sheet just to give it some air around it. So I'm actually going to scoop out exactly four portions because there's four young men um, doing this camping trip. And then I always add just a little tiny bit more just to make sure that there's enough. This is a really hearty, tasty meal. It'll probably be a side. These guys eat like crazy, but it'll be a good starch and protein for them. So I'm going to let this sit. Um, just until it's cool and as soon as it's cool I will bag it up and put it in the fridge so here we are in a large zipper bag I do use the freezer bags because they're tougher and this is going into a fridge here is their hot tent that they will be sleeping in in one hell of a winter storm and eating some warming jambalaya Sorry I can't give you the exact amounts for this recipe because I just wing it every single time. But you get the idea, so I hope you try it. Go live your best life and stay warm.